the family, the family is very thankful and grateful for this love and this support. They truly are. And they pray that many of you can come down and greet them also at the courthouse pub to give your greetings and condolences. But at this time, we'll get the service um, started here soon. Uh, we'll have ushers with service folders and bulletins and hymnals. We can find our, our seats. And I'll head out with the immediate family for prayer, and then we'll begin our service.
Please stand. May be seated. The order for Christian funeral is page 274, and the hymnal is page 274. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In holy baptism, Jerry was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all his sin. St. Paul affirms, In Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. The apostle also writes, All of us who are baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. Christ is risen. He is risen we have come together to seek God's comfort in our sorrow and to rejoice in the promise of the resurrection, and grace and peace to you from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me will live, even though they die, and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. The wages of sin is death. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. When Christ, who is our life, appears, and he also will appear in glory. let us pray. Lord Jesus, you wept at the grave of your friend Lazarus, and you consoled Mary and Martha in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn the loss of Jerry and dry the tears of all who weep. Calm our troubled hearts. Dispel our doubts and fears. And we thank you for bringing Jerry to faith and giving him the gift of eternal life. Strengthen us with your word and sacraments and keep us in the saving faith until we are united with you and all the saints where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join in singing hymn 821 on eagle's wings. 821.
First reading is from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. From the New Testament, turning to the book of Ephesians, chapter 1. The confidence certain we have, certainty we have of Jerry's life and life eternal in Christ before the foundations of the world. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. He did this when he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, so that we would be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ. He did this in accordance with the good purpose of his will and for the praise of his glorious grace, which he has graciously given us in the one he loves. In him, we also have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in keeping with the riches of his grace, which he lavished on us in all wisdom and insight. He made known to us the mystery of his will in keeping with his good purpose, which he planned in Christ. And from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, Jesus says of himself, I am that good shepherd who laid down his life and took it up again. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired man who is not a shepherd does not own the sheep. He sees the wolf coming, leaves the sheep, and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the sheep and scatters them. Because he works for money, he does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I also have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. Then there will be one flock and one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me. Because I lay down my life so that I might take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have the authority to lay it down. I have authority to take it up again. This is a commission I receive from my Father. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Gospel of our Lord. We join now in singing our next hymn, hymn 510, In Christ Alone.
Gerald Otto Weyer passed away unexpectedly on Friday, April 1st, 2022 at his home. Jerry was born on May 29th, 1948 to the late Otto and Sylvia Meyer Weyer. Jerry received God's grace through his parents when they brought him to the waters of holy baptism on June 30th, 1948. In baptism, Jerry received forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. He publicly, publicly confessed his faith in Jesus Christ on his confirmation day on May 13th, 1962. Jerry was a lifelong member of St. John's Evangelical Lutheran Church in Newtonburg, Wisconsin. He graduated from Manitowoc Lutheran High School and continued his education, graduating from Lakeland College with a degree in biology. Jerry worked at St. Nicholas Hospital over 25 years and was the proud owner of Radon Reduction Specialist for the past 33 years. On September 22, 1974, Jerry married his pup and the love of his life, Peggy Holcomer and were married for 47 years. Jerry cherished his children and adored his grandchildren. Jerry was blessed to have three years added to his life, April 10th, due to the gift of kidney from his daughter, Melissa. Jerry was an avid outdoorsman who loved spending time on his property and in nature, often driving his willy jeep. He enjoyed cutting wood with his friends and family. Jerry loved to travel and was inspired by the vast landscapes of the western states by the Native American culture. Jerry would be found many times looking over his property with awe and gratitude in his eyes. Jerry loved watching gun smoke, often saying, I have to see how Festus is doing. He loved his fraternity brothers and stayed in touch with them as much as he could. Jerry is survived by his wife, Peggy Wire, three children, Melissa, Reamer, Dennis, Jessica Wire, Liz, and Brock Wire, two grandchildren, Michaela and Haley Reamer, five siblings, Jim Ohm, Joanne, Jean Wire, Marilyn, Nona Zelmer, Steve, Sue Streeter, Steve, and Nancy Bowens, mother-in-law, Marjorie Hocomer, two brothers-in-law, Perry Hocomer, Diane, and Brian Felrath and Barbara, 18 nieces and nephews, and 11 great nieces and nephews. Jerry is preceded in death by his parents, Otto and Sylvia Wire, Ohm, and Romeo Ohm, sister Janelle Felrath, Rath, brother Jerry Ohm, father-in-law Howard Hocomer, brother-in-law Tom Bowens, and nephew Josh Zelmer. Jerry's passing leaves behind his family, who he loved more than anything. He will be remembered by his family and friends when they gather by a roaring campfire on his cherished land. Jerry lived on this earth 73 years, 10 months, and one day. Blessed in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. The friends and family, especially his children, Melissa and Jessica and Brock, and his wife of 47 years, Peggy. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We'll hear today and have heard today in God's Word all that truly matters for us in life. And as I sat in your home just moments afterwards, I focused us on that. All that truly matters. And we'll hear that in God's word today. Not to mean other things don't matter. The companion on an earthly pilgrimage thing, how God works through us in our lives, that's awesome. It's a beautiful thing that... that he was a companion for you in some form or fashion for all of us, right? Some form or fashion on our way to our eternal life in heaven as you were in some way to him, a companion on his earth, earthly pilgrimage on his way to heaven. So whatever memories and times and things you've had, it's a beautiful thing Cherish those things, rejoice in those things, thank God for those things. And I imagine it's going to happen. For those who are brave enough to go to the end of Heart Love Lake Road, past the no look turn barn, down the hill where the gravel where the where the gravel starts, wind your way back up to the high banks of the mighty Calvin Creek. There'll be some roaring fires in memory of Jerry. 
I have a feeling. Those things are wonderful. Enjoy them. We gather today for what God gives to us of all that matters of our salvation. April 1st, 2022, a man was going to work like he did for 33 years for radon reduction specialists. And all of a sudden, all that mattered was God's grace. All that mattered was what we have in the Christian church right now. A Palm Sunday and, and a Holy Thursday, Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, and next Sunday, Easter. All that mattered then was that, that he had a Christ who came for him, who lived for him, who died for him, who rose for him, and he gave that to him in those beautiful waters of baptism, and he kept him in that faith all the days of his life. That what happened on April 1st, 2022 was not the end. Because he lives. Because Jesus lives, Jerry lives. And these remains will be raised and be body and soul together forever in glory because the one who lived and died for him has a power over death and power over all. And we'll bring it all together. It's God's grace. That's what it is. It's God's grace. That he was a receiver of God's grace. As we heard in Ephesians, before the foundation of the world, a receiver of God's grace at the good shepherd who had him in mind and laid down his life and he took that life up again for him and his salvation. That's the confidence we have today. That's that man, what matters for us this day. And Peggy, I already apologized. I said with your family, oh, I'll find his confirmation verse and preach on that confirmation verse. And St. John's is a place he's been his whole life. It's going to be wonderful. I didn't find his confirmation verse. <laughs> but I found some other ones. I found some other ones. Revelation 2.10 Be faithful to the point of death and I'll give you the crown of life. And I found this one. John 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And I found this one. John 15, verse 5. I am the vine you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And then I found this one. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Confirmation verses. From a God who gave grace to Jerry and a God who gave grace to Peggy. And they were together as husband and wife for 47 years. And through that marriage, they were, God worked to give grace to one another as you learned to love and forgive one another. And as you gathered here regularly, with one another to receive God's grace and reflect God's grace to each other. And then that grace of God to you, Melissa, Jessica, Brock, three more receivers of God's grace. As you brought them to this font, where they receive forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. And where they then stood, where dad stood. Revelation 2.10. Be faithful to the point of death and I'll give you the crown of life. That was Jessica's. 
context of that passage. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I will tell the devil, will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for 10 days. Be faithful even to the point of death, and I'll give you the crown of life. God's grace is not a life that's absent of suffering. Jerry suffered. He had struggles. He had hardships that we knew about. And he had struggles and hardships that only he knew. As he battled that thing that we all possess of his sinful nature and put it to death in those waters when he came and he heard forgiveness of sins and received Christ's body and blood, putting that thing to death, as he struggled and battled that, he had the confidence of God's promise. John 3.16. Brocks. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And listen to this context. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he's not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for the fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that he has, what he has done has been done through God. And I'll say today what he has done as one that God has kept in the light when there's darkness all around, not to condemn but to save the world. He brought him in that light, gave him that light, kept him in that light, and what he has done has been done through God. Now, these lives that have all been touched by, by, by God working through Jerry in some form of another, God is gracious and God is good. Melissa, I didn't find yours either. <laughs> God's grace to you. God's grace to this man named Dennis. And all of a sudden, I don't have his verse either. God's grace to you, and God blesses you, and from that grace to two more. Haley and Michaela. This is Michaela's. John 15, 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Oh, to be convinced by God's word, apart from him, we can certainly do nothing. But with him, we have everything, we have all that matters. And that's what God gave to him. All that mattered. He says, I am the vine. This is, not, this is not an option of things, but I am the vine. This is what I am. And he says, you are the branches. Jerry didn't choose to be connected to that vine. God brought him and made him a branch connected to that vine. And God kept him a branch connected to that vine through his word and through his sacraments. And receiving that, he stayed connected to those truths and that wonderful gift of his salvation all the days of his life. But on April 1st, 2021, 22, we knew exactly what happened. We knew exactly where he is forever. Because our God is gracious and our God is good. Jeremiah 29, 11, Haley's. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Listen to this context. I will come to you and fulfill my gracious promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I've banished, where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. God's grace in our life 
is not a life absent of suffering. These words were spoken to a people who were suffering because of their sins. Yet God gave this tremendous promise. I'm going to bring you back here. You're going to pray. I'm going to listen. I'm going to hear that prayer, and I'm going to promise to, to prosper you and give you hope and give you future because I am so gracious. And what a God we have. Who amongst all the sufferings I've already mentioned for him, he had the certain hope of eternal life. He had a God that gave him comfort even when God carried them off in exile. God sent them away in captivity. Even when it looks as if God is the enemy. Those sufferings come, those trials come to bring bring him back and draw closer and closer and closer to him. I'm sure there's been some throughout his life. I've been blessed to be here for for since June serving as, as his pastor and we've talked a little and some and, and I know there's struggles, I know there's hardships, especially the last few years, there's been lots of those type of things, lots of frustrations, lots of sufferings, not to drive away from God, but to bring, bring him closer and closer to his God and his Lord. God's grace. That's what matters today as we gather And I pray for all of us here that you recognize God's grace for you. The same gracious God who has delivered and saved this soul and body and will be with him forever is the same God who went to a cross and suffered and died and rose for you. Who created your life and gave you life and gave life eternal through his word. And he wants that life to be with him forever. How our God is so gracious. Amen. We confess the Christian faith with the Apostles' Creed, the faith in which Jerry lived in and which he died in. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We sing the next hymn.
continue with prayers on page 276. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you are always with us, especially when our hearts are heavy with grief. Send us your spirit so that even as we grieve, we are filled with hope. You have convinced us that your son Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that our loved ones who have fallen asleep in Christ are resting in peace with you. Let nothing shake our confidence in your promise that we will be united with you and them in glory forever. Lord, in your mercy. What great mercy you have shown us, Father in heaven. Through this, your Son's resurrection, our hope is alive and our inheritance is certain. The bliss and security we will enjoy in your presence are blessings that will never perish, spoil, or fade. Shield us with your power and give us faith to trust in you in every trial until we inherit the glorious riches you are keeping for us in heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, we see your abiding love and the kindness shown to us by family and friends. As we receive comfort and encouragement from others, we are experiencing your care. Help us bear all our burdens patiently. Be the strength of your people, now and in the difficult days to come. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, support us all all day long till the shadows lengthen and the evening comes. And the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in your mercy, grant us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at the last. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing the closing hymn.
the family will process out and to the cars and down to Courthouse Pub. They pray and hope that many can make it down there to continue to greet them and give them condolences. I beg you to your family. God, continue to give you strength and peace now and days to come through his word and your God and your Savior. And blessings as God gives us all that comfort today and always. Thank you.